Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be covering the topic hypoxic spells. My reference is from Parks Cardiology 7th edition. I have included all the points, so if you listen carefully, you won't be needing to go through the textbook again. So let's start it. So hypoxic spells, also called a tet spell or synotic spell or hypersynotic spell, it is usually seen in infants and children with top physiology or other synotic heart diseases. It is seen during the morning hour just after awakening or during crying or during intense physical exercise. The clinical features associated with it are as follow. There will be hyperapnea or increase in respiratory rate and worsening cyanosis and, and disappearance of existing murmur. So this is how up the patient of a uh, death spell looks like. There will be progressive cyanosis with crying and hyperventilating patient. So let's understand the mechanism of dead spell. This is a normal heart with a right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. Blood go going from right ventricle to pulmonary artery and from left ventricle to aorta. Now on the other side, I have shown a top physiology. So there is right ventricle outflow tract obstruction. This is what initiates a dead spell. And there is a VSD that allows shunting of blood. So whenever there is a spasm of this outflow tract, the blood to the lungs decreases and hence there will be increase in blood to the left ventricle going through the VSD and hence there is worsening of cyanosis. That means there is less blood going to the lungs and there will be more deoxygenated blood going to the left ventricle in the systemic circulation. So this causes hypoxemia and it stimulates the respiratory center. I have taken this diagram from Parks Cardiology. Here we can see that the right ventricle and the outflow to the pulmonary artery is stenosed and leading to increased blood to the left ventricle. Now let us try to understand the vicious cycle of progressive cyanosis. Okay, so due to decreased blood to the lungs, there is decrease in arterial oxygen, meaning there is there will be hypoxia, right? So that will lead to decrease oxygen, increase in PCO2 and decrease in pH. That will stimulate the respiratory center because the respiratory center gets signal from the bar baroreceptor and the chemoreceptor that is present. Uh, so what happens, the, uh, there will be increase in respiratory rate when the respiratory center is stimulated which causes increase in venous return to the heart. That is more blood is coming to the right ventricle from the body which will eventually lead to increase in right to left shunt okay we do not want the right ventricle to be burdened because it was the outflow was already uh, stenosed right and due to increase in respiratory rate there will be increase in venous return to the right ventricle leading to worsening of the uh, shunting of blood to the left ventricle so let's start with the treatment now so to abolish the death spell we need to break the vicious cycle. The first step is to pick the infant in such a way that it assumes an EHS position. This photo depicts how to do an EHS position in an infant. So the mechanism behind the Nietzsche's position in infant squirting in older children is same. By flexing the knee, there is decrease in systemic venous return to the right side of the heart. So we are trying to decrease the burden on the right ventricle. So there will be decreased blood uh, available for shunting as the right ventricle outflow ob obstruction is still there. Uh, we also give morphine sulfate that decreases the respiratory center stimulation and we give soda bicarb which helps in correcting the acidosis and decreasing the stimulating effect of acidosis. We administer oxygen to improve the arterial oxygen saturation and vasoconstrictors like phenylephrine which increases the systemic venous resistance and improve the arterial oxygen saturation. Sixth, we give the ketamine which helps in sedating the patient. Propranol is being a beta blocker, it decreases the heart rate and spasm of the right ventricle outflow tract. Now the doses, morphine sulfate is given at the dose of 0.2 mg per kg subcutaneous or IM and soda bicarb is given at a dose of 1 milli equivalent per kg IV. It can be repeated every 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, one point I would like to mention about, about squirting because you can be asked in the short note. Uh, it helps in increasing the systemic venous resistance which decreases the right to left shunt. Hope you have understood it well. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you.